Hello, hello, hello. My name is Pandy Pridemore. So let me ask you, what if you knew what your candidates were looking for before you even spoke to them? Or what if you could figure out what the workforce wanted without even asking them? Well, my guest today is the co-founder of Niche Fire here in Cincinnati, Ohio, Khalil Elamine. And I am so excited because this is new technology. I, I had no idea this even existed. Uh, he had a display at a major presentation here recently in Cincinnati, and I walked up and said, so, sir, do you mind telling me what you do? And he gave me a spiel that I said, okay, you're coming with me. <laughs> More people need to know about what you, you, you do. And, you know, we, we know technology is changing at speed of light. It, it, it just is. But when we've got people like you whose mind is working in a way that our viewers, our viewers need to hear about this. Now, Absolutely. you call it, and I, I printed this off your, oh, no. your website. Words. You call this human intelligence mm-hmm. powered by artificial intelligence. Absolutely. HI, did you coin that phrase? Uh, I don't think so, <laughs> but yeah, 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 sure. It'll work for today. <laughs> for today, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we coined that. Now, um, you know, uh, that was something um, one of our advisors um, as a startup, you get a lot of people helping you out and um, helping you out with all types of things, language or figuring out the easiest ways to kind of explain these complex technologies that you come up with. And um, that was something that we laid our laid our hat on as far as uh, using human in, or empowering human intelligence with artificial intelligence. Well, and, and, and our viewers should be interested in this because there's a lot of legislation right now talking about the disadvantages of uh, um, AI Correct. in the employment process. So why don't you break it down as to what your product does and, and how you even got to this point? Well, th- well absolutely. And, and first of all, thank you for having us. Having me on the show today, Pandy, um, we always give uh, get excited for the opportunity to talk about our technology as we are a small company um, and trying to get the word out about things. So thank you for having us. Um, but Niche Fire is a social intelligence technology. And what we do is we activate billions of the interactions online um, to help companies address their most pertinent business questions. So um, one of the use cases that you and I talked about was an HR use case. Mm -hmm. and where we helped a company, uh, a couple different companies actually, identify the best practices um, to recruit and attract the top talent in their area. Um, So what's going on across the entire United States is, you know, a great resignation, I can't say it, great resignation, right? (laughs) Nobody wants to say it. (laughs) I know, right? Um, And and what that... uh, at very high level, what it what it means is that <clears throat> you have these um, very prestigious, um, very big companies coming in towns all over the place uh, with the needs to have you know a developer or a uh, data scientist or you know a really high level position. Um, but what's starting to happen across the United States is that a lot of the traditional businesses now need that talent as well. Mm-hmm. And what they're up against is the bigger companies or the more um, sexier companies, if you will, uh, taking that talent, getting them right out of college, sometimes in some situations, uh, actually activating those people right out of high school school in certain ways. Uh, So they're kind of behind the ball on attracting the top talent and keeping the top talent um, in their pool of prospective uh, new employees. So what we're what we're able to do, uh, what we were able to do was uh, identify some of the best practices that some of the competitors in a space are using um, by analyzing the social commentaries of those brands and then the users that are are interacting with those brands to develop strategies uh, so that those content teams, those marketing teams can put out the proper message to attract those uh, prospective employees. See, I think this is fascinating because you're, you're saying that there's a partnership within organizations between the marketing team and the brand, the voice, the culture and HR. Absolutely. 
How interesting. Mm-hmm. Something that may be underutilized? Uh, uh, I think so. And I think it could be something um, that is becoming more common now. Okay. Um, with social media and how quickly you can get uh, marketing content out there, a lot of organizations uh, are marrying the, the marketing department to to every aspect of the company um, so they can tell that story. And I think especially for HR, um, when you're recruiting and you're trying to attract that top talent, um, it would make sense to go out with a plan uh, that marketing has already been able to see or understand like, hey, if you do it this way, this might work. Or these, this is what this type of employee is actually looking for. And, and you said you've, had, you've already taken care of a client with this. Tell, us, tell me that story. Uh, yeah, so um, this particular client uh, is in a very competitive area in the United States where they're up against some of the likes of like Microsoft and some other really big companies um, that gobble up this talent and, and, and have the resources to really go get anyone from anywhere. Um, and they want to be competitive and they want the best people to work for them. They're a small financial institution and they want the top talent to come in because they're starting to become more tech forward. So when you change your organization to want to do some of those things, you have to hire the right people. You got to have data scientists, you have to have engineers, you have to have positions that are sometimes not common in that industry vertical. So uh, we were able to develop a strategy where not only did we look regionally or locally, Uh, in their market as far as competitors, other financial institutions. We were also able to look at some of the um, talent um, competitors. And and what I mean by that is that the Microsofts, the Googles Mm -hmm. in town, the um, IBMs, these other tech giants that are actually able to get those people and analyze the messages from those brands and then not only analyze the messages that, are, that were out, but the intent behind those messages, what they want them to do, or what we perceive that they're trying to do with that message. And then we analyze the user-generated content, which is anyone responding, conversations happening within those uh, those posts and things of that nature. And then we take it a step further to uh, analyze review sites and places like Glassdoor to see, you know, what people are saying about these positions, what they like the most and what they want to see. And we were able to kind of find out like, you know, one of the main things that people want now is like a flexible environment with the Mm -hmm. pandemic. Everyone was able to go back, you know, kind of work from home. And I can't really remember how long we were in the house because obviously I, I have amnesia like half the United States when it comes to it. Um, But, um, you know, being able to work from home became a big thing for for everyone in the United States, I would think. Um, We were able to get comfortable. We were able to be more efficient. And some of that stuff stuck with with the employees. So everyone going back to work are looking for these positions. They want to be able to have maybe not a full week of work from home, but it might be a couple days a week they can work from home or just the flexibility to do it if they want. Um, so that was something that we were able to discover across the board when we analyzed those competitors and some of those other places. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also seen, you know, growth and compensation. That's, that's growth and compensation. That's been incredible. it's It's a given. Um, but I think the growth side of it was the most um, revealing thing that we've seen is like, hey, you know, people want to people are willing to work hard for, you know, the sal- salary that you provide them. But they want to feel that that's not it. They want to feel that at some point you can reach a milestone where you can get more, do more and be a bigger part of the organization. So uh, we had tons of verbatims from prospective uh, employees and people that actually are working at some of these places and things they said, um, which was able to really help uh, our customer be able to kind of develop the right type of uh, social media campaigns and stuff like that off of that. Um, and then the one of the last things that um, we saw was um, people, environment, and culture. People are a little bit more forward thinking these days. Everyone wants to see people that are different from them at work. Um, So a lot of information and insights around diversity and inclusion and um, culture, sustainability, things like that 
uh, your potential employees want those things. Those are things that your brand should be able to represent and people should easily be able to find uh, what you're all about when it comes to some of those things. So, you know, the project we did ended up being about a three or four month sprint for us where we just kind of gathered up the information and developed the reports and the strategies and passed them along. Um, but once we kind of fit, finished it out amongst ourselves, because uh, I have three other co-founders, we were just kind of talking about it like, hey, you know, I think that this could be something that everyone could use because it's about to change the market. The job market's getting ready to change what people want. It's getting ready to change. And I feel like people will want this information. So it already has. Yeah. It already has. It, I was so impressed when you said you went out, not only regional and, and, and local, but you went out and looked at the big companies on, on the West Coast and, mm -hmm. hey, remote workers. Yeah. Remote workers. What we, what we were dealing with or what we thought was normal three and four years ago within human resources is gone. Mm -hmm. And your technology and your thought process in all of this is so cutting edge. Um, is is that a typical time period for a project with a client? Uh, absolutely. So uh, we we typically start off with a four month engagement for a customer to just kind of get used to working with us. Um, we really operate as almost like a managed service right now. Okay. The technology uh, isn't all the way de developed, so there is some hand holding um, that we like to do with our customers right now. So it's a more um, consultative slash technology type of uh, engagement. Um, so yeah, usually it's about a, a four month project. Um, and then we, you know, opt to that customer to, you know, either put us on another project or they can, um, you know, they can utilize us for the entire year, entire two years, however long they want. Um, we're just super flexible, easy to work with, um, you know, just trying to trying to hustle and, and get our stuff out there. <laughs> Well, that's what I absolutely loved in talking to you because there were so many people in that room and yet you were talking to me, you gave me the eye contact and you, you were engaged with me and I could see the passion of I was how much you, <laughs> <laughs> I was sweating. <laughs> you love what you do. I do. I you do. love what you do. I, I really do. And um, like I said, any, any opportunity that we get to actually talk about the technology I want to do, and I want to kind of stand up for this, um, the, the good side of AI, you know, you get a lot of crazy, you know, assumptions or, you know, Terminator type of uh, assumptions when it comes to AI and how it's going to take over the world. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the truth of it is that you really need a human to, to, to really get the most out of it. So that's why we coined the term, you know, HI, uh, you know, human intelligence um, powered by artificial intelligence. Well, and this is not making the hiring decision. This is not telling them yes or no. This is saying you need to to understand who your potential workforce is exactly. and what your current workforce is looking for. Because the individuals that are out there in the business world that are my contemporaries or maybe even a little younger, they don't want to hear this. Mm -hmm. They they aren't they aren't looking for it. They're being forced to deal with it. Mm -hmm. They're having to open up and, and look at all the options and the, and the different ideas because it's here. It's going to stay. Right. And I mean, just imagine just kind of making that decision for your company uh, without really any insight on how to attract that person and, and people are seeing your marketing slick or ad in the newspaper or LinkedIn description or however you're putting it out there. And they're like, oh, this sounds terrible. Or, you know, this isn't old fashioned. Exactly. And and not being able to connect with that person for the, enough for them to get interested enough to apply. Right. Um, so you miss opportunities by just kind of throwing whatever out there and seeing what sticks when you can just be more targeted and have have a better plan on how you're doing it first. Yeah. And and again, you will take any client anywhere in the country, anywhere and anywhere in the country. Um, now, I told you before you got here that I was going to throw <laughs> a little twist on you Okay. because we always have a segment in here about what were they thinking? And you're, you know, better than anybody, how much the mindset of the employee has changed right now. Exactly. Right. You, but did you know that according to an article by Katie Navarra from March of this year, 2022, 
the bathroom has become the new office. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not I'm serious. It's not in writing. Cooler. It's no. It's not the water. <laughs> not the water cooler. There's water involved, but not. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding you. You can read this thing. Um, according to this, 73 percent of the respondents reported working from the bathroom. Now, 1,255 people were interviewed. Mm-hmm. That's over a thousand people were interviewed and 75% of them are working in there. And, and you know, the worst, I'm, I'm a visual person. So did you go there? Yeah. Are, do you, do you, I have some of them laying where, in where the bathtub? Gonna, where are you going to sit? Yeah. I've got some of them laying in the bathtub. That's I've the got, couch. That's the couch. Exactly. <laughs> and some of them in the article, you, you guys need to look this up in the article. It, they're putting the computer on the sink. Yeah. And yeah, you know, you got you got to think, and you know, um, uh, for all your hard, the hard workers out there, right? People that don't miss a day at work, <laughs> right? Being told that you can't come back to work, and now you got to go to work, and your rugrats are TikToking and and out of school, whatever was going on with that, and in the bathroom is the only place where you know you can get your peace. Some somebody probably closed a million dollar deal off the off the toilet. Let I'm me, pretty sure. Let me tell you, I would have gone to the closet <laughs> before I would have gone to the bathroom. Yeah, and, man. and I was talking to somebody about this and they said, Oh my gosh, I wonder if there's gonna be a, a new desk. You know how the, how they have the, the standing desks that for, for I wonder if they're gonna do that for the for the bathroom sink. Oh my god. So you can stare I'm, at yourself in the mirror, the bathroom mirror. Hey, be careful. You might see an ad for one on your, on your Facebook <laughs> after we, <laughs> just by saying it. You know. <laughs> oh, God. See, you never know what you're going to hear on the human resource. You, you don't. But the important thing is, you know I'm going to try to bring you solutions. Thank you so much for coming on the show. His company is Niche Fire. They're located in Cincinnati, but they'll work anywhere you are. Anywhere. Give him a call, Google him, or contact the station. They'll be more than happy to give you his contact information. My name is Pandy. Thanks for listening and watching. Hope to see you again. <laughs>